Let's turn to those players right now. So certainly since it was a young team this year, I would think there's some solid expectations for next year. But of course, the question is going to be with Elijah Hughes, uh, who really had a, a very strong end of the season, pumping in multiple 20 plus point games down the stretch here. So talk about the players coming back. Talk about Hughes. I think people must be optimistic for next year for the Orange. It depends on, on how you viewed this season. Do you view it as like a young team got better and if they end up losing Elijah Hughes, they're losing only one key guy? So you expect guys like Barama Sidibe, Joe Girard, Buddy Beheim, even Omarek Dolajai, you expect all these guys to get better. And, you know, some of the other kids that uh, didn't get quite as much playing time, but like Quincy Guerrier as a freshman uh, showed a lot of potential. You know, what could he do next year as a sophomore if he gets more playing time? Uh, Jesse Edwards, the almost seven-foot freshman center, didn't get a lot of time this year, uh, but they liked his his development. So, you know, some people are looking at next year saying, wow, they, you know, they, they could be a lot better. Uh, other people, and I, I might actually actually tend towards this group, some of the problems that this team had, especially defensively, how are they getting better? Um, because, you know, like your backcourt of Joe Girard and Buddy Behan, they're not getting taller. They're not getting more athletic. They're not getting quicker. I thought they played pretty well defensively or as as well as they could this past year. So if that's still your starting backcourt, are you still going to be a little weak defensively compared to some Syracuse teams of, 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 you know, recent years, like, you know, the Frank Howard, Tyus battle backcourt, the, the Michael Carter Williams, Brandon Trish backcourt in 2013, uh, the Michael Benache, Trevor Cooney backcourt that, that took them to the final four in 2016 was an underrated, but really good defensively backcourt. You know, at, I think Trevor was about six, four, six, five. Michael Benache was six, six. They could not win without Elijah Hughes, so they're going to have to figure out a way to win without him next year if he does indeed stay in the NBA draft. Talk about the players coming in and, and what you're hearing so far. Yeah, Kadari Richmond's an interesting guy. He's about 6'5". Some people are saying he's growing still and you know could end up being about 6'6", but he's a backcourt guy. He's he's athletic. He's long. kind of gives them a look that they don't have right now with Buddy Beheim and Joe Girard. They really like him. Woody Newton? Your typical Syracuse forward, six foot eight, long, athletic, really athletic. And, and it'll be really interesting. I mean, they have Marek Dolajai, they have Quincy Guerrier. Um, you know, Marek's obviously going to have one forward spot nailed down in the starting lineup. Quincy played really well off the bench this past season at times, struggled at others, especially defensively. He didn't show his three point shot this year. He, he didn't shoot many. He didn't make him any, but I've seen him in practice and Quincy can shoot the ball. Now, can he make the jump in just one year from a guy who couldn't and wouldn't make shots uh, in games to a guy who can be a reliable shooter? I I'm not sure. That that's a big jump, but he's definitely going to be more of a threat than he was as a freshman. Woody Newton comes in. I've heard people compare him to former Syracuse players like uh, Jer Jeremy Grant because of his athleticism. Wow. Uh, but he'll be in that forward mix uh, with um, also a redshirt sophomore in, in Robert Braswell will be in that mix. And Robert's an interesting guy to watch. Uh, redshirted this past year because of a soreness in his shins that they never could quite figure out. But they're hoping that he's going to be healthy and ready to go. He is a fantastic three-point shooter. Jim Beheim. So 44 years. This is going to be his 45th. What do you think? I mean, is, is he just rolling along? Do you think the end is coming soon? Or, or what do you hear from, from Jim? I mean, just a, a fantastic coach, legendary job at Syracuse, but certainly 45 years. That's a long time. Uh, do you, do you have any insight or do you think it's just taking it year by year? But it seemed like a few years ago, at least to me, he was possibly going to, you know, retire soon, but then all of a sudden he's back, you know, and it seems like he's rolling along like he's 30 years old. Yeah, when uh, Mike Hopkins left after the 2017 season, it was supposed to be one year after that that Jim Beheim was going to step aside and retire and Mike Hopkins was going to take over. But when Hopkins left in 2017, it threw that whole succession plan right out the window. And ever since then, they've had no plan that they've discussed publicly. <laughs> you know, he's been the, uh, the oldest Division I coach ever for like the last three years. Wow. And he's not stopping. So he's, 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 he's keeps setting that record, uh, establishing it higher and higher. Um, you know, his son Buddy is going to be a junior next year. A lot of people had theorized for a while, oh, he'll just, he'll coach Buddy through the end of Buddy's career. But he hasn't said that. And he keeps saying he's going to keep coaching as long as he feels good and feels healthy and feels like he can do it. And, you know, they got a commitment earlier this, uh, this year from, you know, one of the top players in the class of 22, Dior Johnson. 
well, you think Jim Beheim's walking away from like <laughs> his highest rated recruit since Carmelo Anthony? Wow, wow. And, and, and Dior would come in in the year after Buddy graduates. So I believe him when he says he's not thinking about retirement. 